Hello, ES. We arrived to activity three, recombinant DNA, vaccine production. In chapter one, biotechnology and immunology of unit four, science and economy. In this activity, we are going to see what is vaccine, what is it used for, and how is it produced. The concept of vaccination was born with the French biologist, microbiologist and chemist Louis Pasteur, who discovered the first vaccine against rabies in 1885. As definition, vaccines are preparations that consist of either attenuated, which means harmless, or killed microbes, bacteria, or viruses, or of some part of microbes. So the vaccine can be made of attenuated or killed microbes, or with some part of the microbes. The vaccine is injected into the body in order to trigger an immune response, to fight against the microbe, and to create a, a memory that protect the body from a disease or from the microbe causing the disease. So the pr principle of vaccination or vaccines is to trigger an immune response and an immunological memory uh, to a certain microbe or certain disease. When we say immune response and immunological memory, that can be acquired by vaccinations, we mean the production of antibodies by, for example, B lymphocytes. The immune response is the mechanism of eliminating the intruder or the microbe by immune cells, which are the macrophages, the B lymphocytes, and the T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes produce antibodies. The antibody is a Y-shaped molecule having two antigen binding sites. The role of antibody is to bind to antigens, to molecules or proteins expressed on the surface of the microbes, on the surface of viruses or bacteria. So the antibody bind to the antigens or to molecules that belong to the virus or to the microbe and immobilize the virus. The antibody neutralizes the virus or the microbe, thus uh, inhibits the propagation of the infection. So uh, when antibodies bind to the antigens of the virus or the microbe, they help in the elimination of the microbe by other immune cells, for example, by macrophages. Now, following the first entry of the virus or the microbe into the body, or following the first contact, an immune response is triggered. It is characterized by the production of antibodies that lead to the elimination of uh, the microbe. Now we have formation of memory immune cells that are preserved for many years and that are activated following the second entry of the same virus or microbe into the body. The vaccination may trigger an immune response and create a long-lasting immunological memory necessary to eliminate the virus or the microbe when it enters uh, the body again or following the subsequent encounters with the same pathogen. So the principle of vaccination rely on injecting into the body of the attenuated uh, microbe in order to trigger an effective immune response and to create a long-lasting immunological memory to fight this microbe 
when it entered the second time into the body. Now we pass to the basic structure of viruses. The virus is made up of a genetic information molecule that can be either DNA or RNA, ribonucleic acid. So as you can see in this figure, here is the structure of the virus. Inside the virus, we have the viral genome or the viral genetic, genetic material or information. It can be DNA or RNA. The genetic information is surrounded by a protein layer that protects the genome of the virus. And this layer is called capsid. Its role is to protect the genetic information of the virus. Now the capsid is surrounded by an envelope made up of proteins in blue. The proteins of the viral envelope are called antigens. Antigen as a definition, antigen is any molecule, any protein expressed on the surface of a cell. So since these proteins of the viral envelope are expressed on the surface of the virus, they are considered as antigens. They are called antigens. Now, when the virus enter, enters into the body, the latter triggers an immune response against the viral antigens. So the antibodies will recognize the viral antigens or the viral peptides or proteins and uh, eliminate them. That's why the vaccines can be either peptide vaccines or live virus vaccines. So the vaccines can be made up of antigens from the virus extracted from the virus or the vaccine can be made up of the live virus or the whole virus. So there are two types of vaccines peptide vaccines and live virus vaccines. In this video, we will uh, talk about the peptide vaccines. And in the next video, we will explain the production of live virus vaccines. Peptide vaccines, instead of being generated from the whole cell, from the whole virus, some vaccines are made only from viral proteins or viral antigens, or even small fragments of proteins called peptides. There are two methods to make such as vaccines. So in order to make peptide vaccines, we have two methods or ways. What are these two methods? The first method, we can extract from the virus the gene that codes for the antigen or the protein of the viral envelope. You know that a gene codes for a protein, as you have seen in activity one uh, of this chapter. So we can extract from the virus the gene that codes for the antigen. This is the gene, which is a DNA fragment. Now, we insert the gene into a vector. The vector uh, resembles to the plasmid of the bacteria. So a vector is a uh, circular DNA capable of receiving and integrating a foreign gene in order to transfer this gene from one cell to another or from one species to another. So in order to transfer the gene from the virus to another cell, we need a vector. So the gene of the virus is inserted into the vector. Now, the recombinant vector obtained is inserted into a plant cell, for example, into a banana cell. Now, the banana cell develops into a transgenic banana plant. Why is banana plant called transgenic since it has integrated the gene of the virus. So the banana now expresses the viral gene not only 
its own genes. That's why the banana plant is now transgenic since it has integrated a foreign gene and it expresses the, uh, this foreign gene. Now, the banana is uh, administrated to uh, an individual. So when we eat the banana, we eat also what the gene of the virus or the proteins of the virus. Since the banana, when it has integrated the viral gene, it begins to produce the viral antigens. And when we eat the banana, we eat also the viral antigens. So the viral antigens are considered as non-self to uh, the body. Our immune system triggers an immune response and an immunological memory to this virus. So it's the first method to produce peptide vaccines through plant cells, through fruits or vegetables. So now the banana is the vaccine. The transgenic banana is the vaccine. The sec second method to produce peptide vaccines is the classical recombinant DNA technique that uses bacteria in order to clone the viral gene or the gene of interest. So now the gene of interest is the gene that codes for the envelope protein of the virus. As you can see in this photo, if we describe this technique, first we isolate from the virus the gene that codes for the antigen in blue here. So we extract from the genetic material of the virus the gene that codes for the protein of the viral envelope using restriction enzymes. So restriction enzymes are used to cut and isolate the gene of interest. On the other hand, at the same time, we extract the, uh, the plasmid of a bacterium, especially from E. coli bacterium. And we cut the plasmid using the same restriction enzymes used in step one. Now, we integrate the viral gene into the bacterial plasmid and we ligate them using ligase enzyme. We obtain a recombinant DNA plasmid. The recombinant DNA plasmid is formed of the bacterial plasmid and the foreign gene. That's why it is called recombinant. Now, the recombinant plasmid is reintroduced into the same bacterium. The bacterium starts multiply, starts multiplying and producing viral antigens. Since the bacterium now has integrated the viral gene, when it multiplies, it clones the gene and makes several copies of the same gene and several copies of the viral antigen, which is coded by this gene. And finally, we can extract and purify the viral antigen from the obtained bacteria and we produce the vaccine, the peptide vaccine. The peptide vaccine, since it is made up of only the viral peptides of the viral antigen and not of the whole virus. So uh, the first type of vaccines, which is the peptide vaccines, can be produced by two methods. The first method is to make transgenic fruits, which are the vaccines. We introduce the gene of uh, the virus into a uh, plant cell and we uh, allow the plant cell to grow and to express uh, the viral antigens. Now uh, we administrate uh, the plant cell, the transgenic plant cell into the body uh, now the plant cell is the vaccine. The second method is the classical uh, uh, recombinant DNA technique. We can clone the viral gene into a bacterium and we can extract the proteins obtained and we can make the peptide vaccine. Thanks for listening. In the next video, we are going to explain the production of the live virus vaccines.